Nicks. All right, my man, state your name and let them know you on Real Talk with Nick. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Derek. I'm on Real Talk with Nick, chopping it up with Nick about the Knicks. It's good, yo. That's what's up, man. Nick fan? Yeah, diehard. All right. Family, you know that. Okay, who's your favorite player on the Knicks? My favorite all time? I gotta go Mellow. I was still in, still in love with the Mellow era. Yeah, what you like about Mellow, man? It's it's just, I feel like he was just a, he was that all five levels of scoring. He could take you to the post, he could take you out the box, and again, he could beat you down, bring it up. So he to me, he was an all-around scorer. He had, he had the all-around game. He had the all-around game with yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Now, when I speak of a player like Julius Randle, some mm -hmm. would say that he iso the ball like Melo once did. Yeah, Would you yeah. agree with that? I, I could agree with that. He do have a especially especially strong going to the left side. But his problem, like, see, Melo was able to slow it down a little bit and hit you with his moves. Julius, he's still at the I'm gonna go 100 miles an hour at you while I'm posting you and all that. So that's why it'll fuck up sometimes. He'll turn the ball over, or you see, he'll turn it over and shit like that. So that's awesome. my take. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you speak of Randall turning the ball over, someone said he's trying to play like a point forward, which is not even a position. Mm -hmm. But you speak of forwards who trying to act like they point guards. Yeah. You feel me? So once again, Randall, is he a keeper in your eyes, man, from what we've seen from him since he came in as a Nick for the past four years, man? It's been rocky. Mm -hmm. You know? I feel like he's still a keeper. You can't just dip out on him because you got to remember he was when he came to the Knicks we still was looking for that that pop that sprung to bring us back to the to the playoffs and shit like that so I feel like we should still keep him just dial him back a little bit still keep him part as the main part of the offense but just dial him back a little bit feed him more through Brunson and just dial him back slow him down a little bit I'm not saying take the ball out of his hands but just slow him down a little bit now as far as him being the first option, we know that he's no longer that. Nah, nah, yeah. And the way things is looking, man, it looked like the Knicks' offense is being ran through R.J. Barrett right now. I was just I was about to say that. Barrett coming alive. Talk to me, man. It's been five years, man, and now we start to see something in R.J. Barrett we haven't seen since he came in the league, man. What's that, what's that phrase? Um, you could kind of say it's the changing in the guard, like really of who going to take over in the game because – all them, these last couple years, Barry was young and he's coming into his own now. Y'all got to remember that. He's coming into fully maturing as an NBA player and being a man. So if he decides to take that role and be one of the main leaders on his team, can't knock him for taking that step. And as for Randall, I say let him take that step. I'm not saying you're not inconsistent. Like You see what we could do when the ball is in your hands that somebody else get to turn now. And see how you're able to add to his game now, vice versa, and y'all can get better. Now, as far as Randall and, and Barrett, can they coexist together? Certain players just can't gel together. Ah, uh, I say that it, it's hard. It'll be hard for them to gel because one, they both left hand strong, left hand heavy. They love that left side, so that's that's hard. It's just more of. Randall's just gonna have to come off the ball more, I feel like, and not try to be as more of a point forward. And again, like I said, slowing down and letting RJ get his looks and his touches. Cause every veteran know they spots. So if you know your spots where to go to and get your easy six, easy seven, Michael Jordan said it the best itself. You can sell you score seven points a quarter, yeah, yeah. You feel me? So if he go to his spots, yeah, that's twenty eight points. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everybody can eat. You feel me? That's how I look at it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now as far as the point guard and Jalen Brunson, man. Spin that bag. Oh, like you like him. you like him? What's like his upscale? Him. What you like about his Brunson, man? His heart, like the way how bro play. You would have thought he was born, bred, and raised here. He's a like his heart alone just shows his game like he's a Russell Westbrook type player like gives you 110 he goes hard he's not choking in the, the, the moments the big moments I didn't see him choke yet and he got that from Dallas and brought it here so I say keep him keep feeding keep feeding through him but I like what he's been adding to the Knicks that extra punch that ex instead of a one two we are really a one two three punch we just got to put it together 
Now, as far as the defense, man, do you feel the Knicks need to improve on the defensive end when we speak of their ball handle? I say a little bit, yeah. Um, bring that intensity how we had on the defense like two years ago. And yeah, two years ago. If you looked in, in, in that season, they was there, with damn near with all the top contenders in the East, Miami, everybody. They still are. They just got to bring a little more intensity on the glass. On the board, so that's what they now, you seen the game with the Knicks and the, and the L.A. Clippers. Was you shocked with the results, man? It seemed like a lot of New Yorkers thought the Knicks was going to lose that nah, game. I really wasn't because people got to take basketball players that – I mean, basketball people that know basketball, if you know the game, you know – just because they put Harden in them together, so that's not no chemistry. They don't have – Harden, yeah, he scored his 17 days, little, but that 17 really wasn't shit. When you got a well-oiled machine who knows where his players is going to his spots, know how to pick and roll, just off of a – I don't even really got to verbally communicate. If I give you a look, set that screen hard, you feel me? So certain shit like – certain certain stuff like that, it that they got – people got to take that into – Accountability, because that's that, that. Those are the little intangibles in basketball that make and break games. So, are you telling me that you feel that the Knicks is concerning the roster, the starting five, that they are now gelling, where they starting to know each other? Yeah, that's what you see. That's what I see from Barrett coming into his own. The only thing I really say is just slow Randall down a little bit. He's quickly, still coming off the bench, dropping his shit. Brunson doing his thing. You still got, I always forget the, the center name. Uh, Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. He's always still good down low. So you always going to get what you get from him. It's just putting the pieces together. I mean, not the pieces are together. It's just doing those little intangible things to make sure so, like certain games is pulled out for the season. Okay. And as far as the coach, man, when we speak of that, a Tom Dibbett, though, are you high on his coaching ability, man? Because we hearing a lot of slack when we speak of Tom Dibodeau. Some say, you know, he has brought the Knicks to the postseason since 2012 when he was under the leadership with Mike Woodson. Two out of four years ain't bad. But some say this is the do or die year, man, for a lot of Knicks players, as well as the coach himself, as far as keeping their jobs, man. Would you agree or disagree, man? I could kind of disagree because certain – He's one of those coaches, like, they add and bring to the culture of the team. So if they were to get rid of Tom Thibodeau right now or later down the season, that will bring a real traumatic effect to the Knicks overall. You say it would hurt him? It would to me, in my opinion. Because how I feel, like, it's basically the point you were making two out of the four years they've been in the postseason. So, like, can he bring something else to the table for his team? Yeah. But I don't say... Like what? What you think he could bring? More, more intensity for the defense. And we need a couple more role players. Or get a couple guys to step up into being role players. Now, when you speak of role players, man, what do you say about a player when we speak of that of Josh Hart? Hart? Oh, that's... To me, he's a definition of his last name. Any team he's been on, whether it was the Lakers, New Orleans, so forth, he'll come off. He does his job. He come off the bench and give you good work. Whether it's a late game three or, like I said, a late game three or a quick bucket or a defensive stop, it's the little intangibles again. That's what he brings to the game. So more role players like that for that team would bring them so far because they don't, to me, in my eyes, the Knicks don't really need a star player. You don't think they need a superstar? I, I really don't. Would it be nice to have a superstar? Explain to me why you feel the Knicks don't need a superstar. Man. We we grinders. Like, I feel like... So you saying, like, I feel play like, like a bunch of piranhas and forget about that one shot, basically. Yeah. If I can metaphor that. Basically, in, in yeah. Basically, if we all play like piranhas... What, what is that one shot going to do to us, basically? Really? If you really think about it. Not, well, because this era, I feel like now is we need to start a win. We need to start. But if you look back, 
not every championship team had a super superstar. Or well, they had a a great a great a great or a good player, but not a super superstar. To me, in my eyes, but like the past. So you saying years, role players is needed? Bunch of role, role players. players is needed. R.J. Barrett could be a star. Jalen Brunson could be a star. Julius Randle, he's. Uh, I'm not shitting on him, and that's but. He's halfway there. Like, they're star players already in New York. They just have to bring the play style type of shit. Well, I feel like Randall somewhat reached the ceiling. I could say that too. But I don't think RJ Barrett reached the ceiling. Yeah, like he got more to grow. And in Brunson. we don't know whether, yeah, yeah. Well, Brunson too, right? Being that it just came in. But as far as uh, Barrett, man, the way he's playing, man, from the fever. Tournament, he's bringing that his yeah, confidence yeah, level. Seem like he looked like college Barry to me. Like how when he was, when they were him and Zion was playing, and he was playing with that confidence. That's that's all he needed these past couple years was to build his confidence. And not every player when they get to the league has that certain confidence level. Like I'm just gonna come in and ah 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 like Ja and Zion and all of them. It takes certain players to go through that process. It's nothing wrong with the process. I feel like. Us as fans, we got to remember that. It's a process. like. So like, you don't think the process was overdue, man? We waited five years, man. No, nah, that's, just, that's, just, that's, that's basically a college. He, he had to grow into being a man. That's all it was. For a prime example, uh, who, who's the best prime example I could give as a draft pick? Well, I can't right now because I'm trying to make sure I know the question. But, yeah, like, you got to remember, he came in young, his first year out of college. He had to develop. Some players can catch it on the fly like that. Some players, it takes some time to develop, especially if you're in a system like that, like the Knicks. Like, they're going to – I'm going to see what you can do, but I got to see if you're able – if you could do what you can do in our system and help us thrive in the system. That's all it took. Look who the player he is now. And going to keep thriving to be. You see him as an all-star this season? I could possibly can. A couple more games in, yeah. I possibly he keeps scoring and keep doing what he's doing. Yes, I can see him as an all-star this year. I definitely could. Okay. And last but not least, man, being at the Knicks let Obi go, man. How how you felt about that? Obi Top. I like Obi Top. I didn't put it on your head top. That was my guy. I'm not gonna lie. The athleticism that he brought off the bench. And that unit and those points that he provided is going to be missed somewhat because it was that athletic spunk that he brought with that unit. So that is going to be missed a little bit. That's how I really feel. I like Obi Toppin as a player. That's my guy. And the way my man IQ has been playing, man, do you think he could uh, start as a point guard, even though he's a two guard? You think he could... Uh, be the backup for JB, man, if something was to happen? If something was to happen, probably I could say it like that. But if not, he's going to have to – him and JB going to have to keep doing what they're doing as playing the options off the ball, moving up each other, you know, switching it up. That's how I would do it if I was their coach, like give them more than one look. Because I got two point guards. He's just playing the two-guard right now. I would give them more than one look because they're both good at scoring off of the ball. So I would have certain players, JB, bring it up. I will have certain plays where he he'll, he'll bring it up, just to scramble the defense brain. All right, my man. Listen, man. State your name and let them know you on Real Talk with Nick, man. I'm glad that you came on the show. I got my man here coming straight out of BK. It's your boy Derek Jones, also known as Sub Dog from Brooklyn Crown Heights. I'm on Talking Nick with Nick. Highlight me, y'all. That's what it is. Are we.